I don't have I don't have any energy to go like back and forth with niggas on on social media because that's not the type of guy that I'd say my piece and move on with my life. So whatever you know, um, whoever says whatever that they want to say um, and, and in the comments, that's on them. You know, yeah. I said my piece and then I move on. And why do you think people think you're arrogant? Is it because of that same trait that you're talking about? I think we live in a society where confidence and not giving a f- not necessarily giving a fuck actually yeah not giving a fuck what people have to say um you know doesn't affect one's personality like people can't um stomach that type of character podcast and chill Matt G, the ghost lady and Len Moleko Boom, boom. He knew what he was doing, and I look at Cole. Cole doesn't need a Jay Z co sign yeah. anymore. You know, he's just, he can just like wake up to, today and decide that he's dropping music and it's gonna, you know, shoot up the charts. So, yeah. I want to build a situation like that where I know I'm working with guys that are not working for me, mm. but they are working for themselves and the bigger vision. And at the end of the day, the big win will be for them. Gotcha, yes, sir. Uh, let's talk about Kara Kara, man. Fuck, man. Is it safe to say that's the biggest song you've ever had, bro? Yeah, of course. Nah. Yeah, it was. How did that song come about? Because it's got up, a very. Hold up. Yeah? Fuck me. Yeah. That's the biggest hip hop song to date. In nah. SA hip hop song to date. Nah. Yeah. Tell me which song was bigger. Galagata. That's not hip hop. I mean, yeah, Snow Bunny's going gotta, gotta, gotta. You know what I mean? So, I'd say, yeah, I mean, without tooting my own horn, that's the biggest song. That it changed my life. It changed a whole lot of people's lives. You know, people that are associated with me and that song and, and, and the movement. Um, and um, I think just uh, the history that came with that record, you know, uh, we saw the peak of SA hip hop as a whole. Not only my career, bro. But peak of the culture, you know, and everything else that came that year was just like on fire. Whether you're talking like Doc Shibeleza, are you talking uh, Congratulate or uh, all the other dope records that came out this that year, you know, that's just how the game played out, you know, because folks were so much in the SA hip hop bag, you know, and I think we haven't been in our SA hip hop bag. As much as we have, we were that year. Facts. You know what I mean? Facts. Yes, sir. Facts, man. And, and, and like, I want to know how it came about because it's got such a quite an influence, man. It's as if, like, yeah. you went away for a year, didn't listen to any radio, yeah. didn't listen yeah. to anything, mm-hmm. and you're like, all right, cool. I'm going to zoom in and tunnel vision on this sound. Yeah. Um, I was preaching something before I even made that record. The guys that were like, you know, had like solo runs at the time, you know, the El Tito's and the Muggses. I remember at the crib, I think it was twenty early 2013, before I even made Mission Statement, I was like, I was telling the homies, I'm like, yo, look at these Guaito niggas. Look at this, these house niggas. And then look at us. I mean, Tegas was still doing pretty well, mm. you know. I'm like. Shobawami, big fucking song. Massive, right? But we don't actually, we were not doing the same numbers as the big Nazis and, mm. uh, and the DJ Cleos at yes, the time. Yes. I'm like, how? How come are we not, we got, you know, the same not, not, notoriety, but like, how are we not, you know, garnering the same pool? And I figured it out. I'm like, I think we are not really tapping into what the average South African knows. Hmm. We are still a foreign um, culture Hmm. to the South African, to the average South African. Yeah, I mean, they can hear us rapping in Vernag and all that shit, but like the backdrop of the music that we're making is still very foreign. Hmm. So, and I was telling it to the homies and... Maybe it didn't sink in, 
But I was like, okay, cool. So instead of um, talking about it, maybe let me put it into action when I do my shit, right? I wrote the Karakara Hook when I was on um, I was on a plane. It was the end of 2013. I was on a plane to Durban. We were doing a tear gas show. Um, I think it was like a Saturday morning. So we're flying down there. And I was listening to a... Um, what record was it? It had two chains on it. And it was produced by Mustard. Um, one of T.I.'s artists. Forgot his name. Right? So he had that record that was going. So the, the, the DJ Mustard movement, you know, wasn't really fully in yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, but it was like... Slowly creeping just in, creeping yeah. in, right? Yeah. And I mean, it was obviously at its peak 2014, 2015. So I'm listening to that record. I'm like, oh shit, this actually has a nice bounce, almost like a West Coast feel to it. Um, almost like a quite ish bass line to it. How about if we did that in an essay way, right? So I wrote the, the hook. I wrote, wrote the Karakara hook over that record, wow. right? And then, uh, this was December. And then in Jan, when I got back home after, you know, our festive runs as, as the group and bookings and all that shit. When I started, like, now focusing on building my album, kind of Republic One. I said with Lunatech, I'm like, yo, we need a record that almost is like that, um, uh, Rack City, yeah. Rack City. See the big racket mm. from the mustard movement at that time Rack was Rack City, City by Tiger, yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Doom, doom. Yeah. Doom. yeah. Doom. yeah. So that gave me. Yeah. That was reminiscent of like old school quite elements. Yeah. yeah, you know what I mean. So I'm like, we need to take that energy and put it over God like hip hop drums in this country because I actually have a chorus that goes a little sound like this and then boom what is the chorus because I still don't know how the chorus goes you know? and actually when I was listening to that song the this record I'm talking about in my mind because I, I was like yo so everything is being retro remember at the time um, the big thing that was going on you know, gold chains like um, the Jordans, mm. so like everything Swear. from like the nineties mm. was like like those um, crazy crazy <laughs> haircuts and shit, like, like some shabarangs type <laughs> joints. <laughs> everything was just being retroed, right? Yeah. So I'm like, what could I possibly retro from SA? And I thought about the the car mm. you know i'm like yo karaka was like so was part oh, yeah, of our culture yes. like a caravel yes, right yes yes you're right so much it was part of uh, our culture um back in the day you were I remember, boiling bro yeah and then there was like um there was a notorious um caravel bus from back then and it was owned by Trumpies, mm. called the Trumpy bus. Mm, Trumpy uh, bus. You know what I mean? So I'm listening to this shit. I'm like, oh shit. When I'm making this record, I'm thinking, I think I, I feel like Trumpies right now, mm. right? Like with, as I'm writing this chorus. And then with that came, what are some of the dope records that those niggas did? And that's how I, like, oh shit. Uh, yeah, so I'm like, let me tap into that, you know. So it was just like a a nice pot of all those elements, you know, coming together and being translated and being repackaged um, in a new but yet authentic way. That and you is know how smart it. that is. You tap yes, into the old market yeah. and the new. You yeah. bring them together. Yeah. So a lot of the kids... When they heard that, they didn't even know no, exactly. where this whole thing comes from. You yeah. Know what I'm yeah. Fuck, man. That's insane. And and, and Keaton does that now, you know, baby yeah. in the ATM area. Blah, yeah, he's, blah, blah. He's, 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 a, he's a god of that. Oh, my yeah. goodness, man. Which song do you wish was yours right now? Right now? Mm. Like in the country? Yeah. Nah, not. It's for real? Nah. You're kidding, dog. I promise you. Not even uh, uh, that piano song. Kissing, Not to take anything away from them <laughs> shits. Oh, but I would say though, I love what Maporisa and um, Cubs of the Small are doing. Agla leg. 
the album <laughs> just insane fire dude Something so it too mm. pretty crazy right now you mm. know um, but yeah I mean with all those records um, it's it's just they are just enough for, for me to draw inspiration from them you know but mm. not for me to say I, I wish, wish they were my songs yeah yeah. Best song, biggest song of 2019 hip hop song let's do hip hop song uh Bro, like, let's be real, bro. Let's be real. You yeah. know where I'm going. <laughs> Super duper. <laughs> yeah. Let's be real. Uh, I knew you'd say that. What happened with this kind of Republic 2, man? Because uh, it didn't receive as much love. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so when I was... Actually, this is something I picked up also earlier this year when I listened to that album for the first time in, like, months. Uh, and it actually allowed for me to shake off all the bullshit right yeah. when I was listening to that album when I was making that album let me start there remember it was shortly after the cash time thing mm. right and my brand had just like been tainted on so many <clears throat> before I move on to, to actually SR2 I remember we did a bang out uh, Nasty and AKA and myself it was a DJ Vigilante song there was so much dislike for a, the KO brand that motherfuckers said I had a whack verse on that album mm. on, on that record oh, good, yeah. I'm like get the fuck out of here bro and not because I'm a conceited dude but like let's be real you know uh, I'm not saying I had the best verse or whatever, mm. you know, but, dude, you can't tell me that's a whack verse, mm. period. Mm. You know what I mean? But anyway, um, <clears throat> with all that shit that was happening, you know, around, uh, you know, the cash time politics, um, and then post that, you know, when I was working on my album, I had almost... PTSD, so to speak, hmm. you know, um, where I'm just like, I right, cool, I'm making this album because I need to eat. Um, and because there are so many external voices that are telling me how much I'm not worthy ah. and all that kind of, and all those kind of things, you know. So, I mean, I'm proud of that album because I got to tap into a whole different side of me where I really got personal and gave people my personal story for the first time. And some people, I mean, just two days ago, Scoop tweeted something. About, he's like, yo, I'm actually listening to SR2 right now. I didn't check it out when it came out. This shit is fucking crazy. You know, uh, he was talking about, like, some of the storytelling that yeah. I showcased on there with Getaway episode and all that stuff, you know? But, like, you know, to me, when I look back, in hindsight, I'm like, ah, right, shoot. So, mentally, as much as maybe I might have put together, you know, a solid body of work, the energy was just not right. The oh. mindset was not right. And when people receive, it's like when you watch a, a movie and as much as the the lead actor or if any part or if any one of the cast members when you watch their performance whatever is going on in their personal lives they cannot shake off yeah. right it's there it's with them 24 hours you know um, so as much as you might put a great story in front of them and give them multiple takes you know uh, for a particular scene you will always whatever's going on in their personal lives you'll always reciprocate it even years later hmm. they're like oh shit homie was not really in the right place yeah. you know uh, headspace when he was doing this so I feel like now now that I'm like removed from the album I can actually pick up it. oh shit mm. I never really always sounded like that I mean that's a nice line yeah. that's a nice verse mm. nice beat but the cadence, the way that I was saying shit Damn. was not as uh, as welcoming mm. and as colorful 
as I had always sounded, mm. you know. So that's why when people hear this new album, they quickly say, "Oh shit, this reminds me of that energy that mm. like you gave us on SR1 mm. and you know um, the entire Tag as catalog." Mm. You know what I'm saying? So when I heard it, I was like, "Ah, right, cool. That's how." Everything went wrong. Sounds like you're in a dark place, bro. Yeah, yeah, I was. I was in a dark place as a result of all the bullshit mm. that was like just being like all the dots that were being thrown yeah, at me man. and stuff like that. But um, when I made Super Duper late last year, I made a conscious decision that like I right, so fuck it, you know. I mean, I know. Caesar had a lot of opinions about SR1 when I was still making because there was two versions of, of SR2 sorry mm. there was one version that I made and uh, I played it for Caesar and VG and they just like completely trashed it <laughs> right <laughs> and I was confused I'm like what the fuck's going on yeah. so the version that you heard the, the, the version that came out was post their opinions mm. right so now I'm working on the shit like with the idea and with the objective of trying to impress them and all, because I'm thinking now, fuck, people don't fuck with me because maybe now, like, for the first time in my career, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing, Mm. you know? Mm. So when I made Super Duper, I just killed all the noise. Mm. I was like, fuck it. I don't care, bro. Like, I'm I'm that nigga. Like, I I went back to trusting myself without seeking approval from anyone, right? And that record came out the way that it did and I told Sony, I was like, yo, top of the year, 2019, this is a song that I want to come out with. And I was like, "Mm, we're not sure. (laughs) I'm like, bro, believe me. I mean, this is not about whether this song is going to go out and do wonders or not, but the universe is telling me this is the one I need to push the button on, yeah. you know, and just sit back and watch, give it headroom and see how it goes. And I remember it was just like two days before it came out, and I told Caesar, I'm like, yo, this is the song I want to go out with. And he took time to get back to me about <laughs> it, you know. So I'm thinking, ah, oh, shit, he doesn't like this one again. Yeah, right? yeah. And then boom, just before, like the day before, he calls me, he's like, yo, I'm coming to the crib. And then it comes out. I'm like, oh, fuck, this thing is coming. To shit on me again. Yeah. And he just walks in. He's like, yo, you killing this shit right now. <laughs> I'm like, oh, shit, that's crazy. <laughs> so I knew we were about to go. Yeah. You feel me? So, and then what it. I love about your new album, dude, is your your um, features, man. Like that track you did with Java. Love that shit. Amazing. Bro. Shout out how, how to the homie. Is, how dope is he? As he's someone an amazing who does artist. Looks. He's an amazing dude. Like um, that song, actually... Like how it came about um, I was sitting with him Out there at Rough Studio And um, After um, We had finished Fine tuning the beat Me and Rough Java was just sitting there like Shit This is so crazy Yeah But I don't know where to take it And then I'm like you know what I'm thinking we need to, the conversation that we need to have on this record is a motivational conversation and you do obviously a lot of that on your music mm. as Java and there was a song that I referenced on um, his album um, that talks about don't rush things because maybe your time has not arrived yet mm-hmm. you know God's timing so, yeah so you need to have patience in this life thing you know and it was like oh shit yeah I, I know exactly what record you're talking about so when he was writing the hook right there and there um, I think that's the that's message that was playing yeah. in, in his mind right yeah. and um, <clears throat> it just ended up being almost like a similar message, but he put it in a mer- metaphoric way. Mm. You know, talking about when a child is born, before they walk, they need to crawl first. Mm. You know, and before they run, they need to walk first. Yeah. You know what I mean? Let's tell that to your artists. Th- but that's the message that he's putting <laughs> across, right? Yeah. And um, before they can, f- you know what I mean? Like, whereas these days, a lot of guys just want to come in and they want to fly yeah. they don't want to crawl walk mm. run they just want to fucking fly, fly yeah. you know what i mean so that's the gist of the 
racket, the premise of the racket. You Dude, know what I mean? We're yes, almost sir. out of time, man. We haven't even stuck, uh, started talking about the mummies, man. <laughs> we haven't spoken about the ladies. And we're running out of time, dog. <laughs> it's all good, my dog. <laughs> uh, so listen, since yeah. you spit fire in the booth, right? Yeah. We're going to play a game called Spitfire. I'm going to ask you some Spitfire questions. So first thing that comes to your mind, you must just answer. All mm-hmm. right? Uh, Summers. Record of the year, Karakara. <laughs> I'm a piano. Kasi. Uh, family tree. Genius. Fame. Drug. Well, why do you think family tree was genius? They probably were the most bold motherfuckers to come to the culture. Mm. Uh, they disrupted shit, bro. Yeah, yeah. And like for a nigga to come out and say... Oh yeah, I'm gonna fill up the dome on you niggas. <laughs> like, I, I, I'm gonna be honest. Well, I was one of those people that was shaking my head about. It. I'm like, nigga, get the fuck out of here. Yeah. And um, truth be told, we were all waiting for homie to fail. Yeah. Like with that event, and he was like, "All right, niggas, I'm doing Orlando Stadium next year. <laughs> I'm doing F and B on you niggas. You know what I mean? So that's some like that's some powerful shit. Uh, fame being a drug, I agree with that. Yes, sir. Uh, do you subscribe to any drugs? Like, ever dabbled um, in that shit? Nah, like, I don't smoke, I don't drink, yeah. you know, so... Um, no wonder you and Caesar get along. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, yeah, we are on the same wavelength. <laughs> yes, sir. And then and, and fame, what's your take on fame? Like, are you for it? Um, or you couldn't give a I fuck? Always felt, I always felt like I hated fame. Mm. Um, if it was possible for me... Uh, to be in music and for people not to know me yeah. but to know my music yeah. they'll be amazing then be a ghostwriter nah like but I, like I want people to hear my voice bro <laughs> you feel me yeah I want people to appreciate everything that I that comes out my mouth and stuff and um so if if that was possible, possible. for people not to know me, I would have really I would have really been um, up for that yeah, yeah. what July nine nine Watch your line nine nine. Oh shit. <laughs> oh shit. Yo man. I'm, um side dish. That's what I'm thinking. Side dish. Yeah. I wish I wish we had a celebrity edition, man. We could get lit. <laughs> yeah, no, we don't need that. <laughs> and then lastly, uh social media. Fake. Toxic. And toxic, true. Meh. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, you re- didn't you have like a tour with Euphonic recently about the whole? Um, I had, didn't have a conversation with him. He just commented on one of my tweets, and I didn't feel the need to reply to him because I, mean, I mean I'm good with, with homie. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I spoke the way that I spoke regarding piracy because. A lot of folks can say whatever the fuck they want to say, but like I know piracy on a much higher level than a lot of artists yeah. uh, in this game. Where uh, forget the music part of it, how they pirate shit. Till this day, bro, wherever you go in Africa, there's cash time life clothing mm. every fucking where. Mm. And to see that shit, bro, and I'm not even mm. making a single cent off that shit, mm. that shit hurts. Yeah. I had to walk away from that brand and start kind of world Ish. just purely because I, it was just so beyond my control. Have so you been to Small Street, bro? Bro, Dude, crazy. I know that. I know you know that what I mean? So I, didn't have, I don't have any energy to go like back and forth with niggas on on social media because that's not the type of guy that I'd say my piece and move on with my life so whatever you know um, whoever says whatever that they want to say um, and, and in the comments that's on them you know yeah. I said my piece and then I move on and why do you think people think you're arrogant is it because of that same trait that you're talking about I think we live in a society where confidence and not giving a f- not necessarily giving a fuck. Actually, yeah. Not giving a fuck what people have to say. Um, you know, it doesn't affect one's personality. Like, people can't um, stomach that type of character. Mm. I think arrogance is, like, how I break it down, 
and arrogant uh, arrogance comes from um, insecurity. Mm, you know what shit. I mean? Because I feel like being arrogant is um, you not trusting yourself. Um, so you want to use whatever that you have to uh, talk down on the next person. Mm. You know, I'm not. I don't talk down on anyone. And folks can say. Um, KO is arrogant, but there was never even one incident where I um, disrespected anyone on a personal level or some dumb shit or like had a fallout with anyone yeah. in person, like ever since I walked into the game, yeah. you know. But I guess the fact that like I'm an introverted person yeah. and I keep to myself mm. um, and I move a certain way and I just like, you know, I don't need validation from the next guy. It's easily misconstrued as arrogance, but yeah, people just need to understand the difference between confidence and arrogance. Yeah, what do you think of the state of the culture right now? State of the culture is uh, almost miserable. Wow, yeah, that deep, bro. Yeah, yeah, I think it's almost miserable. It's not as exciting as it used to be. I mean, but obviously, there's a lot of factors that come to it. You know, if you talk about um, the recession that we just like, you know, semi-recession that we're recovering from, people don't really have money and stuff, you mm. know, to go to the shows and all that stuff, to buy the music as much as they used to. And also, even on our end as the artists, we haven't really, really put our best foot forward in numbers. You know, it's just been individuals. You know that have been doing stuff so as a result the culture suffers we have individuals that are winning like you know the coffees and obviously uh the nasties and all mm. those guys you know um and myself in my own right and um but like and the maporisas and stuff mm. you know mm. uh, but i feel like as the entertainment industry as a whole we are not thriving mm. you know it's just individuals that are thriving mm. you know what i'm saying um so for me that is why i say we're miserable mm. and it we the the frequency at which we were putting out quality stuff yeah. has dropped tremendously mm. compared to um the previous years mm. you know uh, so the shows are not as exciting. I mean, you go to... I mean, what happened to Authentic Sundays? What happened mm. to Good Sundays? Mm. I mean, even these the, the, this, these days, when you go to maybe like a Major League Gardens or even Pop Bottles, the energy is just not the mm. same anymore. And mm. the culture is not as exciting, you know? So, I don't know. We need to hit like, you know, the refresh button in some way, shape or form. To bring back that energy because a couple years to come we might not have an industry at all wow. because because whether it's because of financial issues from you know the consumer mm. or because we are just not putting out as much quality music as we used to as the artists top five rappers right now uh, top five rappers in this country, bro. Yeah. Um, and you can't include yourself. <laughs> I mean, like, you know what my problem is with our, with with SA hip hop, right? Yeah. I hate the fact that we have to constantly mention the same mm. fucking names, bro. Yes, I get what because you're saying. Because it basically just says we are not progressing. Yeah. There's that no is growth. My, yeah. Mm. So that is my issue. So mm. I don't even feel like men giving you a top five. Mm. Because the top five I'm going to give you is the same fucking top five I probably would have given you four years ago. True. And that's disgusting. Mm. You know? Um, when you look at, you know, the frequency in the U.S., for instance, mm. you know, there's so many people that are coming. I mean, even when you look at, you know, um, Nigeria. Yeah, yeah. You know, you have Mr. Easy. As much as you have a whisk kid and a... Uh, fucking uh, Tevito, mm. you have now Burner Boy, you mm. know. So like, there's always like this new sensation. 
we haven't had a new sensation since Nasty C yeah. in 2015, 16. Wow. That is horrible. Man. I never thought about that. Actually. That's horrible, bro. That was the last superstar we saw that came out. Because obviously MT came just before him. Yeah. But the last superstar was Nasty. This was 2016. Yeah. Poor, bro. Dude, how did you feel being uh, in Ghostface uh, Top 5 from Wu-Tang Clan? Yeah, that was crazy, man. I grew all up... the 2000s, Google Ghostface, man. He's a mm-hmm. big deal. <laughs> I mean, that was, that was humbling. That was crazy because actually how I got into hip-hop also, I've always, you know, like... I mean, I like Wu-Tang and shit. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Matt was the most charismatic guy and, like, you know, the, the chicks loved him. But, like, I just loved... Ghostface's cadence Yeah yeah So when I try to rap Like when, in my early days I'm still rapping in English Like that's what I thought <laughs> I was That's how I, th- I thought I was coming across I was coming yeah. across like a ghost face You know yeah, what I mean And yeah. then uh, eventually when I found my own voice And became myself And then suddenly now I get something like that That's, that's crazy dope, bro. Yes sir K.O., thank you so much for coming through, man. Appreciate it, my guy. I gotta give you this. Uh, it's not as nice as your merch. Your merch <laughs> is dope, man. Uh, but it's a podcast shirt. Hopefully yes, you'll sir. wear it in your next video or something like that. <laughs> Appreciate it, bro. I mean, podcasts are the future. Yeah. So I also want to encourage you just to continue just like, you know, uh, perfecting your craft and okay. stay in this business. You know, I mean, obviously there's... Um, I'm not going to make you wait next time. <laughs> <laughs> nah, it's, all, it's all good. I mean, I know you're running... Almost like a one man show. Yeah, yeah. So it happens. But like, yeah, stay it, stay, stay the course. You know what I mean? This might actually yield big results for you in a year or five years from now. But like, Percent. it's all about again. Listen to Flight School featuring um, by myself featuring yeah. Java. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It takes it talks about patience, and I think yeah. you, that's what you need to apply. Yeah. As a matter of fact, yes, sir. Uh, can we expect a, a tear gas reunion? No, sir. Wow, man. Ah, guys, you can't do that to us, guys. I mean, Just kiss and make up, yo. Uh, I, I don't know about that. But, like, um, maybe we might do shows or whatever. But um, in terms of new music, yeah. you guys will probably even pick it up that it's actually forced because the chemistry is just, mm. like, literally not there. And you're a purist. You don't like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. but that's why, like, I can still do stuff with my, my E, e. Mm. because... It's just organically there. Yeah, That's the my brother. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Before signing off as well, I also want to announce that um, 2020 is going to be um, one of those years, bro. Wow. Because myself, as you heard earlier, um, I talked about getting back into the label situation. Mm-hmm. So the next movement that you guys need to look out for it's kind of world. It's that's going to be the new movement. Um, the first artist that's on there is obviously uh, Loki, who's featured on my album, mm-hmm. uh, Better Choices with My E. And, um, yeah, I'm looking for more troops. Yeah. So stay tuned. Yeah. We're coming in hard. Uh, do you have any kids, bro? No, sir. You kidding? No, sir. Music's your kid, eh? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, I mean, I'll probably... What, are you shooting blanks? Um... No, sir. <laughs> no, sir. Um, I've just, uh, I've really, I've really been trading carefully. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And the pullout game is strong. <laughs> so, um, you know what I mean? But, like, I've just, like, really, I wanted to make sure that, like, um, I, when the day, when, when the day comes, yeah. that I have... Oh, the right woman mm, with the right important. personality yeah. and character, yeah. you know, to bear my kids. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, um, yeah. Dude, one thing I love about you, man, like, um, you know, anyone can have a hit. Yeah. But I respect longevity, man. Yeah. I think longevity yeah. is one of the hardest things to do in this game. And you've, you've proven that, you know. 13 years going for 14. Dude. It's crazy. How many people that you started with are still relevant now, dog? <clears throat> I mean, I I don't use the name. I don't use the word relevancy. Yeah, yeah. But I just think like, um, if you really are for the culture and you're a student and you're passionate about this shit, because like you need to be able to withstand 
the quiet days, mm. the low tides. Because mm. when it's not your time, it's just not your time, bro. Yeah. You know? It might have a quiet storm just as soon as, like, next year. Mm. But if I still want to come out on top, it, 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 I need to be a student of what goes on at the time. Wow. And sit there and be like, all right, cool. Homies figured this shit out. So 2021, this is how I'm busting back out. Because mm. now you borrowing certain things that you're seeing him doing, but you're putting your own personality into it. Mm. And that's how, basically, I've managed to do what I do. Do you have other business ventures? Because I know you're very business Yeah, the, the, the clothing range. Fucking um, dope. Love it, bro. Don't you want to dress me? I'll wear it every episode, bro. <laughs> we got you. <laughs> your, your man is Tulu, yeah. my business partner. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I mean, we got the clothing range. We just been distributed through uh, Studio 88. Nice. Uh, nationwide. Nice. And um, That's a big deal, man. Yes, sir. That's um, a big deal. So, also, another thing that I'm actually about to get off the ground now. I mean, we also have, a, have an event in Wing um, as kind of world. Yeah. Uh, you recently did Zone 6 Yeah we did Zone 6 And we have a big show Also happening back home uh, Where I come from It's an annual thing um, And then um, The real estate game Oh no! Nice. You know what I mean Like so I mean that's still like Early stages though mm -hmm. You know but That's why I'm trying to You know re Really break out as well And also beyond that I want to um <clears throat> With me getting into the label business again, I want to get into uh, venture capitalism. Oh. You know, where even outside music, mm. you know, if I see that McG has a podcast going and it's got a, you know, potential, mm. if I can get in there and be a partner on a certain level, whether I, you know, assist, you know, financially mm. or if I, um, you know, Put you in the right places, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, and just like help grow what you're doing, and that's my investment. Mm. These are the type of things that I'm trying to do as a man. Like I'm trying to get into pretty much any and everything. Hey, we open for there. business, man. Hey, we <laughs> open for business, yo. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So yeah, that's that's where I'm finna go. Dude, you know? I love that about you, man. Since you've been talking, you're always talking about. Growing together, bringing people together like collective, yeah. yeah, like your end result in whatever you want to do, yeah, it's always like, yeah, I mean, it's all about. I come from the parents that mm. raised me, bro. Um, there's four, I have three siblings, there's four of us, yeah, but at any given time in our lives, all the way till this day, mm. in that household, it wasn't just about these four kids mm. even now my mom and dad are housing some extended family yeah, yeah. dudes out there mm. you know what i'm saying so and for them it's not about oh shit i don't have much to you know to share but it, for them it was always on some investing in their own karma mm. and blessing other people with their own blessing you know so I took that from him, and I'm applying it in the business space. Wow. So that's, that's where, I think that's the outlook that we need to have yeah. as people because greed um, doesn't build a nation. Yeah. You know, it builds one individual, and, um, you know, the legacy that comes with that is not really the greatest. Wow. Yes, sir. That's deep. On that note, what a way to wrap it up, man. I could have said time. it better myself, man. One time. Thank you so much, KO, man. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me on the show, bro. PTY Unlimited, my third solo album, best album of 2019, is in stores right now. And Caesar Lomo, we hope you liked this uh, episode. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome, dog. Thank you so much, bro.